What's happening, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I don't always do vlogs. I do show how I make my own videos. Yes, some people ask for it. So this is a viewer request. We're gonna do a video on how I edit videos. So I'm gonna have to edit a video where I'm editing a video. Boy, that sounds like the Department of Redundancy Department. Anyway, <laughs> look, after almost 400 videos, I have done everything I can to shorten the timeline between recording and publishing. Yes, I've done a video on shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve where I show my favorite keyboard and mouse shortcuts. I've done some videos on planar trackers and blurring and tracking, all the stuff that's in my DaVinci Resolve playlist, which is in one of the upper corners now, I can't remember which one. But tonight is something different. Well, it's tonight when I'm recording this. It's probably a morning when you're watching it. Either way, today, we're going to be taking a look at my actual editing process. We're gonna start out with raw footage and end up with a finished product. And while I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio, everything I show you will work in the free version, minus maybe the render settings. Anyway, for this example, I've got a vlog that I recorded on two GoPros, my Hero 9 and the Hero 10. And I've already shown how to do multi-clip stuff, so we're just gonna skip that part. And if you have any questions or there's something in the video that you think I haven't explained, leave a comment below. And if you have a better way of doing it or even just a different way of doing it, leave a comment below because I'm always down for learning new stuff. That's just how I roll. And if you can't edit this fast, don't worry. I used to edit and it took me five hours to do the average video. Now it takes two. If I'm doing an off-bike video or product install, something like that, it can take five or seven hours. You know, especially my destination rides, those take a long time to edit. But this is just a regular vlog that we're editing today, but most of the same editing techniques are used in all kinds of videos. So even if you're not a moto vlogger, you're gonna get something out of this and I will leave chapters below showing the different phases of this editing process. We start with the rough cut, then we do a second playthrough where we add color correction and we do some more tweaks, and then a final playthrough where we do even more tweaks. Also, before we get started, I wanna mention that I do use the Clarity VX plugin from Waves, and I do use the Alex Audio Butler plugin from Unimule. I've done videos on both of those. Check them out in the video description below. Vlogging doesn't have to be expensive, but it doesn't have to be difficult either. You'll sense a pattern here. Everything I do is in the interest of speed while maintaining a certain level of quality. Quality is subjective. So let's get into Resolve and get this edit started. What we start out with is adding our multicam clip to a new timeline. Just dragging it into the timeline editor will give you a new timeline. Or you can press Control N on your keyboard to create said new timeline. Then we're adding the Clarity Stereo plugin and we're adding that to our voice track. And mind you, I've named these, I've named these tracks so that they're easily organized for what goes in them. Voice, music, and SFX is sound effects. So here I am adding the dialogue processor. Yeah, I'm giving away all my secrets today. Now we're gonna start the playthrough and this just plays through. We're literally just doing our first rough draft of the video, including camera angle switches and things like that. So in certain circumstances, I know that I wanna emphasize something. So I will stop playback and come back and change the camera angle and then keep playing until I wanna switch camera angles again. And I'm just using my keyboard, one, two, one, two, to change the camera angle. One is the Hero 10 and two is gonna be the Hero 9 in my case your multicam clip may be different. But as I play through, I'm finding different camera angles that work for the different spots. And in this case, I'm trying to show the windshield and talk about it, so I wanna kinda of emphasize that. And we're not doing any color correction at this point. We don't wanna do extra work, so we'll only color correct what's needed. And if I do make a break in the video, I'll do a camera angle switch, and that keeps the pacing of the video up and also hides the, the cut a little bit. Usually my audio is pretty solid. It's kind of the same volume all the time. So it's not a real big deal to do audio transitions, that sort of thing. 
But what I'm doing here is adding a bunch of different camera angle switches and different cuts. In addition to a little bit of playing around with adding an actual scene break, a couple of transitions, and I like to grab the generator and do a color bar and then the bleep sound effect. You can download a bleep sound effect anywhere. Uh, they're free, you know, copyright free. That's always good, right? And those transitions are just 15 frames. So half a second in my case, because I create videos at 30 frames a second. And since I didn't mention it, this footage is 2.7K resolution, not that it really matters, uh, but it is the 30 frames a second. And we're about done with the first playthrough. I've kind of figured out how the video is gonna go, cut out some extraneous lines, couple of extraneous clips where I'm kind of yelling at the camera about the traffic around me. <laughs> and if you're questioning why I added clarity at the very beginning, it's because it can simply be tiring to your ears to edit for a long session. You know, this video took me an hour to edit, give or take, and with all the background noise, it would have been a lot more difficult to do that edit in one go. I've had a number of videos where I have two mics, three cameras, yada, yada, yada. And in that case, this Clarity plugin is invaluable. It's just absolutely a game changer for me because I'm hard of hearing and I have noise sensitivity. And if you're like me, then you need a little bit of help and I can just dial up Clarity and it knocks it knocks all the background noise down, which makes editing a lot more pleasing to the ears. And the ears are very important. I think it's the one sense that science just hasn't figured out how to fix, that and taste. Let's get back to the next, uh, the next phase here. So in our next phase of editing, I already know that I want to end with a bang. And that's how we're gonna fade out. You see I drop it in the sound effects track. And then we're gonna start at the beginning and I've decided that since I have about four seconds of recording time before I start talking, we're just gonna drag the handle around and get our audio to come up at a certain spot right before I start talking. And then we're gonna go down and grab one of my favorite tracks and we're gonna start with that. It's kind of a signature thing and I've done my fade in for the video and now I'm gonna add in my logo. So we're gonna drop that in and then we're gonna add transitions on it. I've tried a couple of times here to figure out which one I like. We settled on a noise dissolve, that's pretty easy. Simple stuff built into the free version of Resolve. Didn't even use one of the, the fancy ones. But yeah, it looks pretty good there. I like the way it's set up. So now we can move on with our color correction. We're gonna start by bringing in my color corrector node. And I created this in the color tab. You don't have to, but I just like to have my colors look a certain way. So I went ahead and I created this in the color tab and then dragged it into my power bin. If you watched my DaVinci Resolve shortcuts video, you've seen how to use power bins. If you haven't seen it, then I highly recommend you watch it because all my videos are worth watching, aren't they? But now the big trick is you see it's really bright. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the composite mode on the inspector window and we're gonna drag that down until it looks good. I've set that color correction node up to be able to handle a number of circumstances. So usually I only need between 10 and 30%. And now we're gonna go through and we're just gonna add the color corrector adjustment clip to all of the Hero 9 footage because the GoPro Hero 9 records really well, but I'm often either riding into the sun or away from the sun and it plays havoc with my colors. And I've got some more videos on color science coming up soon. Uh, those, the, yeah, those are gonna be in depth, nerd alert. Definitely a nerd alert on that one. But I'm just playing through, I'm looking, I'm spot checking, I'm checking the different video clips to see how much they need. And then we're also doing some zooming, okay? We're doing a little bit of zoom stuff, basic stuff. And then we're gonna get into some of the fusion things, cause I like to play around in fusion quite a bit. And my first attempt at tracking the white car was a failure. So we had to go back, reset it, and do that again. I have a video on tracking things, so check that out. The link will be in the description below. And we're just gonna slap an arrow on that one, a big blue arrow. It's something I use all the time. It was a free download. And we're gonna track the arrow to the car to draw the viewer's eye into the car. And then we also have a zoom effect on top of it to really 
pull in on that car. And it creates a neat effect when we zoom out while passing the car. <laughs> Pretty cool. After that, we're just adding more color correction and adjusting the composite mode. And we're doing a little bit of the zoom and sharpen. I have an adjustment clip in my power bin that zooms in a little bit and does a sharpen so we don't lose the detail. And that's the rest of the playthrough for that phase. Next up, we're gonna do our final playthrough. For this, we're gonna need Alex Audio Butler. And if you're not familiar, the 10 second version is Alex Audio Butler handles help on the vocals a little bit. It also does all the music ducking under the voice, as you will see in the final video product, where you've noticed that the music volume drops when I'm speaking, and if there's no talking, the music volume goes up. And it also keeps your sound effects, voice, and music tracks all in the all in the same range so that they mix well together. It does your mixing. It's a mixing plugin. Moving on. I add that you have to play through at least once so that you get a good final render the first time through, and that saves you time. There's the pattern again. And this gives us a chance to make a few more final tweaks. There's not gonna be any big changes or wholesale changes, but we are gonna make some final tweaks to the video before we do the render. So let's get into that now. So we're gonna to move to the beginning of the timeline and I had changed that color for the clips because I was thinking about cutting that clip out. And I also enabled the one music track that was in the middle of the video. But now here I am adding Alex Audio Butler. It goes in pretty quick, just drag and drop. I already know what my settings are. So the first few times you may spend a little bit more time mucking around with this, but generally it's, uh, it's pretty quick once you get used to it. Big tip, put Alex Audio Butler at the top of the list of plugins. This is crucial. And by crucial, I mean it cannot be skipped. The folks at Unimule, when I first tested this product out, said that Alex Audio Butler's uh, voice plugin and music plugin, et cetera, had to be first in the chain. So that means at the top of the list. And in the Fairlight tab in DaVinci Resolve, it's really easy now in version 18 to just drag and drop the plugin to be first. Now we're ready to do our playthrough. And it could be a little slow because Resolve hasn't fully cached everything, but it's generally going to play through very smoothly. And in here, I'm just gonna make a few different changes. In fact, I decided to add a section where clarity was knocked up all the way to 100%. And thus I needed another Alex Audio Butler plugin for that, the voice plugin on the second voice track that I just created. Pretty easy stuff, pretty easy stuff. Once you get used to Resolve, it is really easy. And I wanted to point out to the user that Clarity was set to 100%, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And then we're gonna restart our playthrough. We want Alex Audio Butler to get a very full picture which is incongruous because it's doing audio, but we want it to get a full sense, rather, of what we're doing. So we're gonna play through the whole video this way, and along the way, I'm even gonna do some more fusion stuff because I kinda got bored at this point and I wanted to throw another tracker on when I show the Batwing wings, and then later on, I will do one where I failed the first time, but then I succeeded the second time in tracking a building so I could put my channel logo on there, which I think is really cool. It's a lot of fun. And at least one viewer has suggested I do that. So here's the first time I'm doing the track supposedly, and you're gonna see that it absolutely fails. It just couldn't hold that building properly. Too many things were obscuring it, I think. But then I go into the second one and 99% of it worked fine. There's a little tiny bit of wobble and that's no big deal. So I'll just let it run. It's a lot of fun. I think it gives the viewers a where's Waldo sort of thing. So if you are the person that suggested this, um, Ace is for you, plus 10 internets. Deposit them in your account today. It's a made up thing, I know, but I really do like doing the tracking and with the 2.7K recording with the GoPro, it is made a lot easier, let me tell you folks. And then we're just gonna finish playing through and adding more of our zooms and changing a few things around, adding another text overlay because I screwed up a word. And that's what you can do, it's a visual medium, so you can just change that. And now my friends, it is time to render. Yes, the final step. 
And I'm not gonna go into all the details. I believe I already did that in a video. If you have any questions on my render settings, leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to help, I really am. I don't know why I sound like that. But we're gonna go set up a render now and do the render. And here you can see that I've got a preset for my render and it's 2.7K resolution, 30 frames a second, and the best quality H.265. And you'll see I go through the settings here. It's a quick time H.265. The encoder is NVIDIA, which might be a studio only option. If you don't have it, I'm sorry. Um, spend the 300 bucks and get, <laughs> get the uh, studio version. But then I use a custom resolution to match the GoPro, which is 2704 by 1520. And you can see my quality is set to best. And then we hit render and it goes through and it's locked at a max of 50 and it likes to catch up. So if it drops below 50, it'll raise above it afterwards, but it's gonna render for about six minutes. And while that's rendering, we can close out this video. I hope it was helpful, I really do. I've had a number of comments on my videos asking how I do my editing, how I get out so many videos. And if nothing else, I hope this helps somebody speed up their editing by 10%. I think that's a worthy goal. You let me know in the comments below if I've reached that goal or if you wanna see something else that I do in Resolve because at this point, I've got about 2,000 hours in it, so I've found most of the shortcuts I'm gonna find for the video editing style that I use. And obviously, if you're using motion array effects or somebody else's motion graphics, or if you're using you know, memes and other things, that'll slow your editing down, it'll add to your style, because everybody's got their own distinct style. Everybody has their own assets, everybody's got their own B-roll, Everybody's got their editing style and recording style. And that's a big takeaway from this is that figuring out how best to record for your editing style and then edit for your recording style, it's something that took me 250 or so videos to really nail down. And at this point, I am, I'm actually shocked. I edited this video in just an hour. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll drink iced tea to that. So anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, boop the like button, maybe consider subscribing. I'm gonna leave a list of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials here and my rides there. And we're gonna end the video there. Like I said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm always happy to help. Hit me up on Instagram. The link is on screen now, hopefully. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.